Hi folks, just a quick video on the carburetor for this 12A Bridgeport. This is the stock Nikki carburetor with all the stock jets as it came out from the factory. And as much tinkering as I have done to get it to idle properly, that's still not quite right. The idle tends to hang, as you can see here. So the main reason it hangs is because the mixture is too lean. We can only reach it so far on the mixture adjustment screw on the base of the carburetor. So we're actually going to be changing the slow jets in the carburetor today. So I'll show you how to do that. So to remove the carburetor from the car, you uh, take off the air filter and then there's four nuts that hold it to the intake manifold. I tend to leave the throttle linkages all connected and then you can flip the carburetor on its side and disconnect them like that makes it a lot easier. It is a bit tricky getting access into the uh, into the throttle area, so we'll go ahead and do that. So to change the jets inside the Nikki carburetor, we need to remove the air horn, which is this top piece here. And we will need to remove this choke linkage here. So we're going to have to remove the split pin with pliers. We're going to have to remove this choke assembly here. And disconnect this vacuum line under here. So we're going to have to undo these two screws here. Those two screws there. And then this assembly can come off. We're going to undo the center bolt that goes right through the center of the carburetor and then undo all the screws on the top. And two there, and then one over here. And then we're going to carefully pry up on the carburetor and lift off the top. So over the first gen RX-7's life cycle, for the most part the carburetors did remain pretty much the same, although as the years went by features were added and things were changed up. So for instance, my carburetor has quite a few different features on it with air conditioning and cruise control and all that jazz. But other basic functions also have changed over the years. So for instance, my idle air and my idle fuel mixture have been changed compared to the SA or the Series 1 RX-7s. The base idle speed screw is also different. So the throttle body is a different casting. Compare that to the first RX-7 carbs. This one is a Series 1 or an SA. It's only got the fuel mixture on it, and the casting is actually a bit different between the two. Other things that they changed, they had power valves on these carburetors. Whether it was an earlier one does not. My one doesn't actually have one, so this was a feature that they removed over the years. And the corresponding air horns have changed as well. So this one has the addition of the power valve. The other thing is the size of this port here where your choke flap is. So this one here, which is the uh, one on my car, as well as this one, is physically larger than the one on this air horn here. So subtle differences like that, that they changed over the years. And you can see as well, different emissions and solenoids and whatnot were added and removed. This one's been blanked off. The jets and air bleeds are pretty much the same. They're at least very similar. The floats are all the same. So here we have the carburetor opened up. Starting on this side here, we have our accelerator pump diaphragm inside of this housing here. Underneath this screw here, we have a check ball. And there's a passage that runs over to this here. So you've got your two squirters that go into each primary venturi. Under, under there, there is another check ball in there. Over here, we have our air bleeds for our slow circuit in the primary. These jets here, these are the slow jets. And then you have your primary emulsion tubes here. Over here you have our two secondary venturis, which are vacuum operated. And you have our two emulsion tubes here. You have the two secondary jets here. And then you have the uh, air bleeds for the secondaries. Having a look at the float bowl. This carburetor doesn't have it, but you can have a power valve there. You have a primary jet here, and then a secondary jet here. So these are your main jets. Same again on the other side. So the reason why we're modifying the Nikki carburetor on the Bridgeport engine is just because of the overlap the engine has. So these carburetors do perform quite well on a Bridgeport, although we do need to adjust some settings on it. So you mainly need to adjust the fuel at idle, and we're going to change out our slow jets, so these two here. You can adjust the amount of fuel with this screw here. This is your fuel mixture at idle, and this is your air at idle. So by screwing the fuel mixture in, you lean it out. Screwing it out, you richen it. And you can get only so much adjustment out of that. 
And if you screw this screw in here, you reduce the amount of air on the idle circuit. And if you screw it out, then you increase the amount of air. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these two slow jets, and it's going to increase the amount of fuel that the engine gets at idle. And the reason why we want to do that is just because of the overlap that the engine has. So with a bridge-ported engine, the exhaust gases are going to make their way into the intake air, and they're going to dilute the fuel mixture. And that does cause the lean condition, so more fuel is a good thing. So here's a comparison between the two jets. The left one is the stock one that came out of the carburetor, and the right-hand one is the one that will be going in. This has a 0.7mm diameter hole in the end of it, and this is significantly larger than the one on the left, so this should alleviate our lean running condition and help the engine idle a bit smoother. So we've given the gasket surface and the float poles a good cleanup. It looks a lot nicer now. So we can screw our new idle jets into the carburetor body, and we can tighten them down. They went through the ultrasonic cleaner, so they should be nice and clean. What I won't be doing is I won't be adjusting any of the air bleeds. I won't be adjusting the primary or secondary mains because at the moment this carburetor actually runs the engine pretty rich on medium to high loads and I think it's pretty safe to run as it is. The only issue was the, um, the idle circuit running too lean and that just caused a little bit of trouble with light loads and also idle. But now that should be sorted out. The only other thing I want to do on this carburetor is a vacuum secondaries to mechanical secondaries modification. And that's very easy to do and it's also very easy to reverse if you don't like it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So the carb is now ready to go back together. This is the old gasket here. I managed to get it off in one piece and I could possibly reuse this but I'd rather use a new one. So what I've done is I've used it as a template and traced around a piece of gasket paper. And then I've got this to go on. It should work just fine. So with the air horn back on, we can screw all the fasteners down. We put all the screws back in, put all the accessories back on it. And then we can uh, work on the vacuum secondaries. So most of the screws are holding down the air horn now. Next we're going to put on this choke actuator. So this tab here has to locate into the slot here. But you have to make sure that it goes on this side of the spring. So it can't go on this side, it has to go on this side. So when the spring releases, it'll pull the choke open. Last thing we need to do is put this linkage back on the choke. So having a look at how I've done my mechanical secondaries, you can see here, this is the piece of wire that ties these two parts together. So they rotate as one now. This piece of wire does need a little bit of slack in it because you don't want it so tight that these two pieces bind up. So by leaving a bit of slack, they do move as one. So when you open the main throttle, the secondaries will be mechanically forced open using this linkage here. And this works quite well. A couple things that you want to bear in mind. You want to make sure that there is absolutely no chance that this can get caught and that the throttles can jam open. If that happens, that's very bad. One of the nice things about this modification is if you don't like it, you simply cut the wire and then the carburetor is back to vacuum secondaries. So we're still using the vacuum diaphragm, which is under there. It's still connected. We just leave that alone. So we have the primary throttles on the left and the secondaries on the right. And if I open up the throttle linkage slowly, you can see that the primaries open almost all the way, and then the secondaries will open. The only downside with this is if you stomp on the gas, you might get a bit of a uh, lean stumble. So with bridge ported engines, they don't really enjoy idling below 1500 RPM, so of course you're going to have to raise the base idle speed using this screw here. This is actually quite difficult to access while it's on the car, and it can be a bit difficult to see. But you undo that lock nut there with an able spanner, and then we can screw this in until we achieve a good idle speed. Right, so the carburetor is back on. We'll put the uh, air filter back on it, and we'll just run it up to operating temperature. We might have to just make a few adjustments on the... Uh, idle speed and also idle mixture, but we'll cross that bridge when that comes. But hopefully the car should run a bit smoother now.
So I've just come back from a small drive and the jets that we changed out, those two slow jets, have made a massive improvement. So the idle is a lot more consistent and it seems to be a lot more tunable. It uh, doesn't hang when you change gears and whatnot like it used to. And the other thing I've noticed is that when you turn on the headlights, the engine RPM doesn't drop down as much as it used to, which is a good thing. The only thing that I don't really like is the mechanical secondaries, so I'm going to remove that modification. It's quite simple, you just need to snip that wire tie. So there's our piece of wire that we cut out. Now we are back to vacuum secondaries. So I did find that the mechanical secondaries, although they were a bit of fun just to mess around with, the uh, lean stumble was actually quite annoying. I find that the vacuum secondaries work just fine on a full cart bridge port. Some people have said that the bridge port won't have enough vacuum to drive them open, but I found that to be rubbish. They work perfectly fine. The carburetor now works a lot better with those two jets changed out, and uh, the car responds well. So I'm just going to carry on driving it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.